So Fox News alert as we continue reporting tonight from Hanoi, Vietnam, Jorge Ramos, six other Univision staffers detained at the presidential palace in Venezuela. This allegedly occurred after an interview with the Venezuelan dictator Nicolas Maduro. According to reports, Maduro didn't like the line of questioning, so he ended the interview, confiscated the equipment, and had Ramos, along with his colleagues, arrested. We do have an update. Thankfully, thankfully, three hours later, the group was released. We'll continue to monitor this disturbing story. But I got to tell you, you know what? I don't agree with Jorge on a lot of issues. He's an American. More on the uh, Trump-Kim summit coming up later this week. It is yet to take place, but a hate Trump media mob already he hasn't gotten here. Criticizing the president. Watch this. Just as he's meeting with Kim Jong-un, Michael Cohen is on Capitol Hill. He has two private meetings and one public testimony on Capitol Hill. How could that impact the negotiations we see in North Korea? What could we see the president give away? I think the president's just looking for good press. I mean, let's just be frank. He felt like he got a good good press after the last one, and he figures a, a, another photo op might might do that. Did the president say that he loved Kim Jong-un again this they, weekend? They have this, what, Love and kisses? Role. Did he? I don't know. It's unreal. Now, back in the real world, the president is making progress with our Asian counterparts. president tweeted, quote, today, China, trade deal, and more in advanced stages, relationship between the two countries very strong. I've therefore agreed to delay the U.S. tariff hikes. Let's see what happens. Here now with reaction in Vietnam, Fox News Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry and Fox News contributor Dan Hoffman. How many years in the CIA? A lot, Ed. A lot. I okay, can't he, tell you. No, no. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, everything we do. Yep. No, you can't do that. No, you're being hacked. No, you be, you're in the shower. They're videotaping you. <laughs> You, you scare the crap out of everybody. <laughs> I thought we finished the shower talk on the radio this morning, Sean. <laughs> we did. Uh, all right. Look, you, you were making fun of my scooter trip. No, I, I want to talk about here. this. I want to make a confession. I was here during the drama when your producers were running around saying he might not make air. They were like, Henry, get in the anchor chair. He might not make it. So I was hoping this was my big break. You were going to do the Hannity PM. monologue? Yeah, I was ready to do As the monologue. Written? So when you got here, right. I was glad to see you, but not that glad. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You know, we're here for an important reason. And, you know, we just mentioned the Cohen. Three hearings yeah. this week with Michael Cohen. Really, this week? This week, when you think of all that is at stake, no more missiles fired, mm. hostages returned, remains returned, president gives up nothing, and serious opportunity for a lasting peace and more safety for the world. That's how sick these people are. Let me take a look at that from the optic of Kim Jong-un, because what he's doing is looking at the president and the challenges that he's facing domestically. And so he's seeing that, that Cohen is going to be testifying this week, and he's going to factor that into his own negotiations this week. There's no question about that. I mean, Kim Jong-un. Kim Jong-un is, absolutely. You know, uh, look, you know, first of all, you know, th these Democrats don't care about him. You know what? The guy's going to jail. He's got the hardest time in his life. Yeah. Putting that aside. Really, the former attorney of the president, right. okay, one of hundreds, and this is what Sean, it used they're to doing this week. That politics stopped at the water's edge, meaning that presidents, Democrats, or Republicans could conduct foreign policy in peace and try to come together. That's not happening now. Senate Democrats this morning fired off this letter with all kinds of conditions about what should happen here in Hanoi. Look, they should hold the president's feet to the fire. We have to move towards denuclearization. We need specific steps. All of that true. But when did Democrats write a letter to Barack Obama over eight years about getting tough with North Korea? They didn't. Spoiler alert. And right. the problem got worse and worse. Here's the bottom line. Here in Hanoi, President Trump could do a number of things, but two in particular. He might come up with an agreement that has a, a finally an end to the Korean War decades later. That's huge. That's a big deal, number one. And number two, might move closer to denuclearization and move away from a nuclear conflict. These are major, major and steps. And a better, and uh, the shot of a real benefit trade deal for the American farmers and workers and everybody else. You know, I'm watching all of this and I'm like, this, this is now pathological to the point where you can't give a week for a president abroad in Asia, in, in Vietnam, to negotiate a peace without the, the two-year Trump-Russia narrative with no evidence. Yeah, I mean, I think that hopefully the, the China narrative is going to overtake that a little bit. You know, the president has negotiated a trade deal with China. And remember that 90 percent of North Korea's trade is with China. And so that deal is important economically for us. It's also important as we seek to put pressure on North Korea with the and sanctions and China. about that on China. 
a year or so ago. How many critics of this president said he'll never get a deal with China? This tariff thing is a fool's errand. Well, like he's winning on that number one. And a year and a half ago, they said, uh, you know, fire Jerusalem, and fury, Iran. Yeah, fire and fury will blow up in his face. We're gonna have a nuclear war. The uh, opposite has happened. The amazing. Opposite. Peace through strength. And look at the economy. They, they can't, if he cured cancer and gave every American ten million dollars, they'd still hate him. It's, that's how psychotic it's gotten. Thank you. You're gonna be reporting all week. You're with us all week. I'm glad you made it tonight. All right. <laughs> By the way, Shifty Schiff, biggest liar in Congress. Well, do you want it? Doesn't want to come on our show? We'll tell you the reason when we come back. And yeah, I took the scooter here, and it's a wild trip, and we'll show you the whole video. And it was I wouldn't have gotten here in time. We'll explain in Vietnam from Hanoi.